Hey guys, it's D Money Baller. Today we're going to have an old fashioned showdown from 2014. The late 2014 Mac Mini, which I just picked up from an auction for around $240. And on my left, we've got a Think Station with an i5 4570, 16 gigs of RAM, and a terabyte hard drive. I picked this bad boy up for around $130. That's a $100 difference between the two, and we're going to be doing a Mac versus Mac comparison. You heard me right. This is a Hackintosh. This is a Macintosh. So they're going to go head to head, and in this video, I'm going to break it down why you would want either a genuine Mac product or a not so genuine Mac product. In this corner, we have a late 2014 Mac Mini. This bad boy's running a dual core i5 laptop processor, eight gigs of RAM and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Things that I like about it, it's tiny. It doesn't, the power supply is inside, so all you gotta do is carry a power cable. If you were gonna switch between workstations, you just have two separate power cables and you never have to worry about cables for it. On the back, you do get Thunderbolt 2, if that's interesting to you, you know? I don't, I never really got into Thunderbolt 2. Um, it's got one HDMI port, but you could probably power more displays with the Thunderbolt 2 ports. It's got an SD card reader, headphone jack, a fan, an ethernet, and four USB 3 ports. Some of the benefits of having an actual Apple product is upgrades are a cinch. Everything just works. You can work AirDrop on this just right out of the box. Even if you're running like an OS that's not Catalina, that's not the most up-to-date, this came with Mojave. And I genuinely enjoy using Mojave, so I'm probably not going to upgrade to Catalina. And it's a wonderful thing when everything just works. You just plug it in, you don't have to troubleshoot anything, it just works. I think that might even just be an Apple slogan. I hear it about Apple products. It's true about this Mac Mini. I just plug it in and everything works. In this corner, I'm not gonna pick up this computer because it's bulky. It doesn't have the same form factor, but it's got an actual desktop chip. It's a four core processor and we're gonna notice that it does a lot better in the multi-core and single core scores for Geekbench and Cinebench for that. Um, it actually takes a lot of configuration to set this up into, so it will boot into Mac OS. I probably spent four to 12 hours working on it. Um, and I learned a few things. Once you make your bootable USB drive, you have to plug it into a USB 2.0 port because if you don't, it won't be recognized by your um, boot menu. And some things don't work on this. AirDrop does not, this does not come with Wi-Fi. I could buy like a $50 Wi-Fi card that people claim on Amazon will give me AirDrop. Some of the benefits of doing a Hackintosh, they're cheaper. The difference in price between these two is about $100 before I start doing any upgrades. I can throw a $20 SSD in here and put Mac OS on that, and it's running like a charm. It comes with 16 gigs of RAM, and those are all replaceable. So right now it's got four RAM slots with four gig DIMMs in each of them. If I wanted to put go up to 32 gigs, I just put eight gig DIMMs in all of the four slots, and boom, I've got way more RAM. If I wanna switch my processor out, I can do that. If I wanna switch my motherboard, I could do that. With a Hackintosh, you're able to switch components around yourself. The Mac, the RAM is soldered onto the motherboard. I can't replace that. All I can do is replace the hard drive, and basically that's about it. Not a lot of upgradability. Hackintosh, you've got upgradability. This even comes with a CD drive. If CDs are important to you, you might consider a Hackintosh. Fighters, are you ready? Let's roll those benchmarks. All right, here we've got the Mac Mini. We're gonna run a Geekbench 5 compute for the CPU. So as we can see, the single core is around 660 and the multi-core is 1326. I'm gonna run a quick metal benchmark. And as we see, the metal score was 468. 
So I'm just going to run an OpenCL graphics benchmark and we'll get those results shortly. As we can see, it got a score of 4210, pretty respectable graphics. And run Cinebench R20 to see what this can do. That took us eight minutes to run and we got a score of 574. Now we're gonna do Geekbench 5 Compute for the Hackintosh. On single core, we got 903. The Mac Mini had 660. That's a 36% improvement. Multi-core, we got a score of 2940. That's a 121% increase from the Mac Mini score of 1326. Now I'm gonna do a Cinebench run on the Hackintosh. That run took four minutes, six seconds. We finished with a score of 1210, which is 636 points higher than the Mac Mini, which is 110% increase. Hackintosh scored 350 on metal. Mac Mini did 468. 33% better for Mac Mini. The Mac Mini did 38% better on the OpenCV graphics, and that just means that the Mac Mini has better graphics. In conclusion, if we're going on a pure performance per dollar, Hackintosh wins hands down. It's not even a contest. However, this will require a lot more time in setting up. You could be really good at setting up Hackintoshes. It's probably still going to take you 30 minutes to two hours to set it up. If you know nothing about it, you're going to have to do a lot of reading and a lot of Googling. And it might say it might take like five days of free time to just get this into macOS. However, macOS is not the only operating system in the game. But if you want a plug and play solution that you're just going to pay a little bit more for, I would suggest going for a used Apple product. If you've liked this video, smash that like button and subscribe to D-Money Bala for all of your tech videos. If you've got a video suggestion, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think about Hackintoshes and have a great day.